once again, Poke Trainers near and far, Mark Maker here, back at it again with the Hypno Defense. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Mark, come on, you already made a whole 20-minute video defending Hypno. How could you possibly defend them even more? Which, by the way, if you haven't already watched that video, I'd say it's basically required viewing before watching this one, because otherwise you'll be missing some context, and I also won't be going over every single thing I presented in that video here, and I'd rather y'all not be confused, so just pause here and come back when you've watched it. For the rest of you who have watched it, though, the reason I'm making a follow-up video is because I've gotten a few comments bringing some things to my attention. Some are things I genuinely wasn't aware of, and would like to make my stance on, and others are just kinda dumb? But I don't want to be too mean about it, so I'll be keeping my snark and sarcasm as minimal as possible. Though, not at zero, cause let's be real, it'd be a pretty boring video if I wasn't at least a little sassy. Alright, so which response is first? Hey, so I just wanted to mention that I'm pretty sure the Fire Red slash Leaf Green Hypno Pokedex entry is referencing the quest in that game, where you have to go get a little girl from a wild hypno in a forest. And you get the chance to catch that wild hypno, which I'm pretty sure is level 30, so you can bring the girl back home to her dad. It happens before you get the national dex and is a required story mission before you can move on and fight the Elite Four. Thank you for your feedback, Kila. Okay, so... Before I say what I want to say about this, I just want to marvel first at how the Pokedex entry is so widely spread and so well known, and yet in all of the research I did for my last video, I didn't see anybody bring up this specific questline on any of the sites I visited. I'm just saying to all y'all arguing the anti-hypno stance, it might do everyone some good to bring up stuff like this, instead of hyper-focusing on the Pokedex. Aha! So you concede. You can't argue against this event, so you admit that Hypno is a kidnapper and thus totally creepy and undeserving of any defense or favoritism. Hold your horses there, buckaroo. I didn't say anything like that. As a matter of fact, after this comment was made, I looked into the questline myself. And it took a little bit of brain power, but after watching gameplay videos and looking into Pokemon Wiki articles about it, I realized something that changes the entire context of that questline. Lostella, the girl who was found in the woods, was never taken by Hypno at all. She went into the forest to collect berries and, of her own fault, accidentally wandered too far. Then the Hypno showed up, and didn't even hypnotize her or do anything to hurt her. But she was a little girl who was lost in the woods, and so had every right to be scared of things she wasn't familiar with, especially since she didn't have any other means of protection before the player comes along and either catches or defeats the Hypno. So yeah, she just went out on her own, and the Hypno was just… there. There wasn't any kidnapping or anything, it's all just a misunderstanding that most people tend to misread because of the implications of the infamous Pokedex entry. And again, thanks for the feedback. It's always nice to be able to learn a little more, especially since this didn't come up in my first round of research. Unfortunately, not all arguments are created equal. I'm gonna be honest with you all, I was expecting someone to leave this exact comment on my video since day one, and sure enough, it finally showed up. The real problem with Hypno is it doesn't have a good stat. It's all meh. Okay, so... I don't play Pokémon competitively, I'll admit that right now. So, maybe I'm biased when I say I don't get the whole stats argument, but like, I do still have a couple rebuttals that I have to make here. The first one is, isn't that what IV training is for? To take a Pokémon that you don't think has good stats and make those stats better? And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it also possible to improve stats through breeding? I get it, maybe Hypno doesn't have the best stats at first, but just put a little elbow grease into your training and they can be more useful than you give them credit for. As for my second rebuttal, I think that the Elite Four member Karen put it best. Strong Pokémon, weak Pokémon, that is only the selfish perception of people. Truly skilled trainers should try to win with the Pokémon they love best. And yeah, that's basically all I have to say about that point. 
Up next is a little reminder I got about a different in-game questline that didn't show up in my first round of research. This one in the Sun and Moon games. You forgot that the Pokemon school in Sun and Moon where Hypno fake being a trainer. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I should have remembered this myself as someone who has played the Sun and Moon games before, but it's been several years since I have, and my memory is not exactly known for being the best, so it's entirely on me for not having gone over this in the first video. My bad, guys. Since it had been so long since I'd played Sun and Moon, and I wasn't exactly willing to play through them again just to get to this point, I decided to watch some gameplay videos of the questline. In this questline, the player is investigating seven mysteries about the trainer school at night, but naturally, we're just going to be focusing on this one mystery. When the player enters the specific classroom in this quest, there is a teacher and students in the room. Many of the students tell the player to join them and be their friend. And I'm just gonna steal some words from Gator X, who made a great video about this questline that you should really go and watch. To quote Gator, talking to the teacher reveals that she was secretly a hypno casting an illusion. The class also turns out to be an illusion. Hypno isn't exactly harming children or directly abducting them, but it clearly wants to be loved by children. Basically, all this Hypno was doing was making its way into an unoccupied school at night and pretending to be a teacher whose students loved them. It didn't even kidnap actual kids, it just projected illusions of children to fuel its make-believe fantasy. Oh no, how malicious. Also, looking through the comments of Gator's video, I found someone who added that the Hypno was said to be the one who picked up a girl from the school before she was abducted by a Drifloon. It's likely that the Hypno belonged to the girl's parents and was supposed to be something of a guardian for her, and so fell into sadness after the girl went missing. It's pretty likely that the Hypno uses the classroom fantasy as a way to cope with the loss, given that there's a projection of the missing girl in the class that Hypno pretends to teach. And honestly, if that Hypno is so eager to be loved and shows a knack for teaching, I would argue uh, someone who works at the school ought to capture and hire that Hypno. It wants to be loved, and it wants to make learning fun for its students, as gathered from the dialogue of the illusionary children. I say Hypno should be allowed to teach, or at the very least be a teacher's assistant. That way, it could have new people who could love and care for it, since it seems the parents of the missing girl no longer provide care for it, and it would be a great way for it to cope and feel better. So yeah, the Seven Mysteries event is less of an example of a Hypno being creepy, and more of an example of a tragedy that only shows that this Pokémon is in need of more love and support. You know, something that proves what I've been trying to say for years. Anyway, we're almost done. What's the last rebuttal in store? What about the 1996 Pokedex booklet that says towns with hypnos have a spike in missing kids? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Really? The 1996 Pokedex booklet? Ah yes, clearly literature that every real Pokemon fan has, and follows to the letter. Why, don't you know that it's practically the Bible when it comes to Pokemon? Oh no, woe is me, for I have never read and do not have the 1996 Pokedex booklet, whose word is law. Seriously, if this is what you're reaching for to defend your reason not to like Hypno, I might as well call you Mr. Fantastic, because boy is that a stretch. Like, let me be clear, folks are allowed to dislike Hypno as much as they want, but for fuck's sake, can y'all at least come up with better reasons to dislike him than the fucking 1996 Pokedex booklet? I think that's probably the most obscure piece of Pokemon-related media I've ever heard of, and I've been into the franchise practically all my life. And it's gonna take way more than the 1996 Pokedex booklet's entry on Hypno for me to change my mind about Hypno. I don't care if you think it's the most canon thing in the world, I can tell you with certainty it is not. And I know I keep saying it over and over, but I just... the fucking 1996 Pokedex booklet? <laughs> you serious? 
I told you guys, I really did my best to keep the snark to a minimum, I just couldn't resist on that one. At any rate, those are all the responses I've got. If anyone has any more information about Hypno that you think would make for a nice friendly debate, feel free to leave it in the comments and maybe I'll make another video. You're also more than welcome to let me know what your opinion on the fluffy yellow tape here is in the comments. And while you're there, it would mean a lot to me if you would hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. But for now, this Starboy's gonna blast off. Peace!